नमस्ते एवरी वन इफ यू हैव इन चेक आउट पार्ट वन ऑफ अ स्पेशल टू पार्ट सीरीज ऑन स्पिरिचुअलिटी आई डू रेकमेंड यू चेक आउट दैट एपिसोड बिफोर यू चेक आउट दिस वन आई एम नॉट गोइंग टू टॉक टू मच अबाउट दिस एपिसोड इन द इंट्रोडक्शन आई एम गोइंग टू से दैट इट इज अ हैवी एपिसोड एंड आई होप दैट इट ओपन्स अप सर्टन थाट प्रोसेस इन योर ओन माइंड वन यू टॉकिंग अबाउट अ कॉन्सेप्ट लाइक स्पिरिचुअलिज्म देर इज अ लॉड ऑफ heaviness attached to the sentences used to the concepts that spoken about so please check out part 1 just for context for now make sure you follow the ranbir show on spotify for a spotify exclusive now which means that every episode is available on spotify 48 hours before it's available anywhere else in the world this is part 2 of our special on spirituality enjoy <music> great advantage of living in this beautiful country is the same reason that so many foreigners so many spiritual seekers from other countries visit our beautiful country india we have access to spiritual training we have access to spiritual wisdom and that's the beginning of the second part of the special spiritual podcast that we're creating in the last episode i spoke about my first steps into spirituality this one is about where i really started finding my feet so i've done reiki by this point but also from a career perspective i was under pressure i was a youtuber i needed to do something more with my life i couldn't just be a content creator i knew that's not what i was born for i wanted to launch monk entertainment and i knew i had the business skills I knew I had the people skills. I knew I had the grit to be able to form a successful business outside of just creating content. I even had the self belief by this point. I probably just didn't have the professional glue as I like to call it. I didn't have that X factor. But I had also seen by this point that years of meditation, just one or two years of meditation actually a process of visualization how much it had benefited my sense of calm that i carried into my work in stressful high pressure situations i'd done reiki by this point but i felt like it wasn't what i was looking for and i started searching for deeper forms of spiritualism watched a lot of sadguru videos on the internet and then eventually i ended up coming across a lot of fellow spiritual seekers just like myself one of them pointed me to vile parle it's a suburb in mumbai and he told me that it's the last existing transcendental meditation center in mumbai transcendental meditation is very famous all over the world it's called tm you have lots of celebrities who practice tm oprah winfrey i think tim ferris has experienced tm the beatles have very famously been proponents of tm and they credit tm for giving them their sense of creativity their sense of direction their sense of purpose that's what i went searching for i needed that x factor that career glue i go to the tm center in vile parle i enroll for a course it's a 3 day course not as grueling as reiki it was just a one or two hour session for 3 days back to back in the morning they give you something called a beej mantra a beej mantra is a really tiny mantra that's like a beej beej is the hindi word for seed it's like a seed that you plant into your head and then it grows into a plant and that plant is what gives you the fruits the career glue the relationship glue the life glue i practiced tm with the personalized beej mantra that they gave me and that's why really discovered the power of mantra chanting mantra jap repeating a mantra constantly in meditation just one short mantra it could be something from your own religion it could be something you've grown up with just that one mantra om om namo tattvaya om namo shivaya om vasudeva namaha these short mantras just repeat them in your meditation and witness the effects it has on your process of meditation 
we'd done a podcast with Dr. Radha Krishnan Pillai where we spoke about this concept of short mantras or beej mantras and he compared it to pole vaulting the beej mantra is like a staff for your pole vaulting technique it helps lift your mind up and lift your mind beyond your own sense of consciousness when you're lost in your mantra chanting what tends to happen is after a point say 15 minutes for some people 10 minutes for some people when your mind is extremely calm your mind doesn't even remember what it was chanting but your breath seems to be following a pattern of its own and the chant moves from your mouth and your mind to your breath it's a very difficult concept to wrap your head around unless you've experienced it yourself and my first experience with beej mantras was through tm i did see the benefits it gave me but i just felt like it was in my cup of tea now around this same time i ended up meeting one mr manish pandey i've spoken about him on this podcast we had him on the show he introduced me to a book called the autobiography of a yogi and this is where things exploded in my life spiritually years of om chanting practicing reiki practicing tm all of it had benefited my career but this one book it was so heavy it was so heavy that i wanted more of it what manish bhai told me was that when it comes to some books you don't read them the books read you and the books give you what you need at that particular moment if you read that book with a sense of respect with a sense of seeking with a sense of wanting evolution from that book it gives you your answers it gives you your next steps it gives you your guidance the tm the reiki the om shanti it had made me calm it had given me career glue and we had begun building a business youtube was also growing by itself my family life was getting better my relationship was getting better i was becoming a much calmer person but i wanted that next step as with my material career i'm always looking for the next business to build the next challenge to overcome the next mission to go on to when it comes to spirituality i'm always looking for that next step of spirituality to jump towards autobiography of a yogi is an extremely heavy book we are supposed to read one page at a time and if it isn't entering your head easily you put the book down and you try reading it the next day you're not supposed to force your way through that book you're supposed to retain as much as you can you're supposed to read it with a sense of respect and that's exactly what i did over the course of a year on days where i would have problems on days where i would have questions on days where i would face challenges i would take those problems and questions and challenges and turn to the book and try finding my answers within the book and i am not kidding you i'd find those answers in that book some books are just written with a sense of power that just carries itself through time that book was written in the 40s i was utilizing it in 2000 18 that's how powerful that book is it's made me who i am today it's shaped up a massive part of my personality and this podcast isn't about the book that book is an infinite source of knowledge by itself i've reread it so many times i've reread so many chapters but i'll tell you what the book led me to reading that book was like a year long ayahuasca experience and it made me understand that yes spiritual growth happens through consistency and it happens through finding these advanced meditation courses but what it really happens through is text written by an evolved soul is conversations with evolved souls both of which have very willingly somehow come into my life over the course of time and i'm extremely blessed to have experienced both reading that book opened my mind up spiritually and there's no limit to spiritual knowledge often on spiritual podcasts we sometimes get comments under youtube videos saying hey this is not how you think of it this is how you think of it because a lot of different spiritual schools approach the same topic slightly differently everyone's trying to say the same thing be a good person meditate regularly pray to god or that higher power be humble be kind to other people be loving towards your own loved ones forgive be easy on yourself live healthily it's the same concepts 
but it's these little nuances these little differences between the schools that create rivalries that create fights that create arguments that create criticism in between those schools my point is that i'd experienced other schools but i found myself in yss what is yss the person who wrote the autobiography of a yogi yogananda paramahansa he set up something called the self realization fellowship in america which contains a yoga course for advanced spiritual seekers people who want those advanced forms of meditation can do that course and get to higher levels of spiritual growth the self realization fellowship is called the yogananda satsang society in india and that's what i'm a part of without getting into too many details of this story the wise story in my life i remember reading that book over the course of a year feeling the change it had brought about in me changing me as a human changing my perceptions of life once i closed that book once i was done with it i wanted more so i googled yss mumbai and i found out that it was 10 minutes away from my house 10 minutes by walking distance i'd walked past that building all my life and never noticed it so the moment i realized it's 10 minutes away i left my house i went there and for the first time when i was entering one of these advanced meditation courses i felt something different i felt like i sort of come home i felt like i'd returned to something i don't know how else to explain this but this is what i felt i went inside they had an office where you just feel this incredible energy lots of these old ladies few old men sitting there running the office and i went and told them i've read the book and i want higher levels of spiritual growth and they said we have this course that's pretty much free of cost it's like worth 80 rupees or something i enrolled for the course and they told me hold on before joining this please know it's theoretically intense to study all this it's also extremely intense to practice the practices that are within this yss course are you open to it the kid that learned martial arts inside me the teenager who lifted weights that young adult who meditated regularly all three of them said yes i'm up for it this is what i need for my next stage of growth and since i've begun the yss course there's been no looking back what's within that wise as course we're not allowed to speak of these things on the internet but what i will tell you is that it's incredible and it's not just about yogic techniques or breathing exercises or meditations it's about a certain thought process it's about a certain lifestyle it's about a certain way of treating people it's about self growth it's intense it takes time it takes patience it takes consistency but this is the most massive jump i felt spiritually practicing yss techniques regularly that's what it takes probably when we do the podcast that's about the autobiography of a yogi i'll talk a little bit more about these yss lessons what i will tell you now is some nuggets from the six year journey as most of you know i have dealt with severe addictions in my life be it alcohol be it marijuana and over the course of meditating that much you notice that your body starts rejecting certain substances it began with rejecting alcohol it then started rejecting red meat then white meat then rejected marijuana then it rejected eggs rejected what does that even mean it means that when you consume those substances you just feel bloated you feel a little low you feel a little lethargic and you're not able to meditate well on the days that you consume these substances so your body automatically kind of just realizes and i i think i'm going to stay away from this that's nugget one nugget two you feel a strong sense of connect to some higher power and the closer you get to that higher power the easier you feel about yourself the calmer you feel about yourself the more you're able to live life with a sense of focus number 3 anger leaves you first through the habits i spoke about in that first nugget second through the 
sort of self mutilation that you're putting your mind through you feel anger that's not spiritual notice that you're feeling anger push it down and show you don't express anger first you learn to not express it then you learn not to even feel it acknowledge it don't let it sit in your head because anger doesn't get you anywhere next nugget you feel a much stronger ability to love both romantically and with your family and trust me no amount of money or fame or power of numbers will give you the same joy that a moment of pure love will give you even if you're the one who's giving the love the next nugget all of this returns the goodness you're putting out in the world the love you're putting out in the world all of it begins to return to you when your core is that spiritual process the love returns to you immensely you work hard you put out value in the world that value comes back 10x you help people and lots of people come to help you when you need it you really start noticing the effects of karma over the course of spiritualism in your life over the course of a spiritual journey in your life next nugget you gain these tools for your career if you need creativity your creativity gets enhanced if you need confidence your confidence gets enhanced if you need peace and calm that gets enhanced whatever you need from a soft skills basis from a soft skills perspective those things tend to get enhanced next nugget you become extremely tolerant you're able to take criticism like a non living being almost like a robot you become sort of non reactive to criticism you absorb it you become tolerant towards it not just criticism from trolls or haters but criticism from your peers your relationship with criticism and growth changes probably because the anger is kind of faded away and you see life extremely functionally next nugget you tend to become extremely zen about moments in your life be it the pain you're feeling in a situation or the joy you're feeling you're able to separate themselves from you you're able to develop a very beautiful relation even with something like death if there was no sense of spirituality in my life i would have been destroyed by both my dogs dying within the span of a year but i was able to handle that much better that's a whole other podcast where we'll talk about death in detail next nugget was wise's lessons i'm not even done with half of them they've all arrived but they're so heavy and you're supposed to retain all of them so much that it's not able to get through them easily you realize how much knowledge there is to be absorbed to be learned about and that quest for knowledge makes you a more curious person makes you a more interesting person helps you have better conversations which is honestly given rise to the podcast and the final nugget this isn't something you should work towards the only thing you should work towards in your meditation is getting closer to god or the universe you need to be single minded about it but you're gifted immensely when you begin a spiritual process there's a quote from the autobiography of a yogi that says do not chase money for money is a toy in the hands of god chase god work towards money and you'll see that the money will chase you work towards it don't chase it money will come to you fame will come to you numbers will come to you power will come to you positive thought will come to you more than you can imagine in fact there'll be so much of all of this that you'll be tested very often money will be coming to you like a tsunami and then suddenly there'll be a wrong way of making money that will appear in front of you that will manifest itself in front of you an unethical way of making money will you take that up and fail your spiritual test or will you say no and chase god once again even when that crazily sexy form of making money is coming towards you you start gaining power and then suddenly a really dark powerful human being puts their hand out and says 
Let's join hands and you'll become even more powerful. You'll become 10x more powerful the moment you join hands with me. Will you join hands with that unethical person? Or will you say, no, I'll chase slow growth. I'll do the right thing and I'll pass my test and I'll go closer to God. That's the final nugget. Spirituality throws tests at you. If you pass those tests, you'll get more gifts. If you fail those tests, you don't just go to a lower level. You might fall back to where you began from. It's like climbing a long, infinite ladder. We are constantly tested. And the higher you get, the more difficult the tests. Every step prepares you for where you're supposed to be in life. And this is why I say that this is a parallel career. It's not like your material career. Your material career depends on your hard work, your strategy, your soft skills, your people skills. All of those can be strengthened through spirituality. That's an insight into my spiritual journey. And at every stage, it's helped me level up in terms of my own career. Of course, I can break it down much more. But maybe that's for another episode. If you enjoyed this one, make sure you like it. Make sure you share it with fellow spiritual seekers. Thank you. Namaste. So that was our two-part special on my own spiritual journey. I am so glad that we've built out a community where I get to share these experiences with you guys. There's so many open-minded people. And I also know that there's a massive segment of the Indian population that may not accept spiritualism just yet. But it's probably conversations like these, podcasts like these, experiences like these that will kind of open up their minds as well. That's the hope that I've made this content with. Do spread the word about these two episodes. They're very close to my heart. They're probably the most special episodes we've created on the Ranveer Show till this point. Thank you for tuning in. Make sure you follow TRS on Spotify. Every episode's available on Spotify 48 hours before it's available anywhere else in the world. I'd love to know what other solo podcasts you guys would like to listen to. So let me know in the comment section. Thank you, thank you, thank you a million times. Lots of love. Thank you.